This is my buddy, diving a shipwreck off the coast of Florida around 75 feet deep. These fish are mangrove snapper. They're very tasty, and for that reason, he's about to shoot one. But the fish bolts for cover inside the shipwreck, which usually wouldn't be that big of a deal to retrieve, except for one thing. There's a massive grouper, almost as big as the hull of the ship, lurking inside. And it, too, enjoys eating snapper. Let's play that back real quick. You can literally hear the powerful chomp of the grouper on the GoPro microphone as it swallows that fish whole. That's a Goliath grouper. Weighing up to 800 pounds, they're one of the biggest and most powerful fish in the entire ocean. And in this video, we lose an even bigger fish to one of these Goliaths. This story starts on the opposite side of the world, in Bali, at my villa. One day, I was sitting at my desk, procrastinating making YouTube videos by watching YouTube videos. And I came across a video posted by a guy named Captain Jack Spiro. In this video, he and his friends were spearfishing cobia off the backs of a massive school of enormous bull sharks. Bull sharks are among the most aggressive sharks on Earth, partially due to the fact that they have the highest levels of testosterone in the entire animal kingdom. They can also sense the struggle of an injured fish in the water. And so, when Jack doesn't get an instant kill shot through the head of one of these cobia, the sharks go into a sort of feeding frenzy. And, as you can imagine, you want to avoid triggering a feeding frenzy of bull sharks at all costs. So, they devised a plan. They attached 9mm bullets to the tips of their spear guns, so that now when they spear one of these cobia, they simultaneously blast it with an actual bullet at the same time. Which increases their chances of killing the fish instantly, and decreases their chances of being accidentally bitten by a hungry, testosterone-filled monster. Did I mention that these guys are from Florida? And we got into some serious, intense shark encounters, so stay tuned, you ain't gonna wanna miss this. Anyways, before I even finished watching that video, I had already messaged Captain Jack Spiro on Instagram asking if I could come join him. And in what might be the most Floridian response of all time, Jack informed me that, unfortunately, it's not the right season to spear giant cobia off the backs of dozens of massive bull sharks with a literal bullet retrofitted onto the tip of a spear gun. But we could go chase grouper in the Florida Keys. And so here we are. Up until this point, I've only ever spearfished in Indonesia, where instead of tractor trailers and big American pickup trucks, the locals generally carry their boats by hand. The biggest difference though, is the fact that Florida has very specific rules as to which fish are legal, what season they're legal in, and how big they need to be for you to catch them. You can see on this dive, I've forgotten the rules as to whether or not I can spear this mangrove snapper. And 
I decide not to risk it. I thought it was too small. Oh yeah, I'll go like that. In Indonesia, there's pretty much only one rule regarding fish regulations. Do not catch Napoleon rats. Weighing up to 400 pounds, Napoleons mature extremely slowly and aren't able to reproduce until they reach around six years of age. Combine that with the facts that there's a massive demand for them in China and their meat's extremely expensive, these fish are very susceptible to population decline. So much so that they're now listed as an endangered species and the Indonesian government has stepped in to protect them. Having said that, pretty much all other fish in Indo can be speared, no matter the size or the season. Even whales, dolphins, orcas, and whale sharks are, to this day, hunted by a tribe of remote villagers who have been granted an exemption by the United Nations moratorium on whaling. I recently lived with these guys for a few weeks, so stay tuned for that video dropping soon. Anyways, speaking of Chinese demand for seafood, let's talk about sharks. In Florida, these days, they're largely protected. The sharks in Indonesia, however, don't enjoy that luxury. Thousands of them are caught every year by locals who sell their fins to the Chinese in order to make shark fin soup. It's a massive industry that's resulted in extremely low shark populations. This footage is from a nonprofit organization called Project Q, whose goal is to replace shark fishing with shark tourism. Anyways, my point is, when spearfishing in Indonesia, sharks usually aren't an issue because, unfortunately, there are so few of them. Meanwhile, in Florida, Not only are the shark populations thriving, they're expanding. After watching the sharks go at it for a while, I can't help but feel extremely thankful that I'm not a female nurse shark. However, here in Florida, sharks aren't necessarily at the top of the food chain. Check out this video I found on YouTube from a channel called Global Panda with 68 million views. While line fishing off the coast of Florida a few years ago, they hooked a shark at which point a goliath grouper seizes the opportunity and seizes their catch. After some searching on Google, I found that this is not really an uncommon occurrence, but more on that in a moment. This is me, again, on my way down to around 70 or 80 feet deep. And during this dive, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video. G2A is an adventure terminal. It's an online marketplace where you can find lots of digital entertainment that's cheaper than the normal price. And with instant delivery, there's not only games, but also software, gift cards, e-learning, and a lot more. G2A is celebrating its birthday with a special campaign with tons of discounts, great offers, and a competition starting October 9th. In this competition, users can not only win gaming laptops, but also a year of free gaming. Anyways, back to that fish. You can see that the ocean floor is covered with boulders and caves. And if you don't stone the fish when you shoot it, like this mutton snapper, it will likely get tangled up down there. Especially if it's a grouper. And yes, that's what you call foreshadowing. Anyways, G2A is your gate to adventure. Purchasing is extremely easy. For instance, when I bought this zombie game, I was able to download it immediately and start playing instantly. Hit the link in the description below to join G2A's birthday competition for a chance to win gaming laptops and other prizes. And thanks again to G2A for sponsoring this video.
Let's talk about these underwater cave systems for a moment. Snappers aren't really our main target. Groupers are. Not those giant goliaths, though. They're protected and you can't spear them. We're after black groupers. Grouper. Which sort of look like a mini goliath with a few distinct differences. One thing that's not different, though, is the caves that they like to live in. Fly grouper, baby. Sick, nice. Basically, you dive down, sometimes with a flashlight, and look in every nook and cranny you can find. The fact that grouper like to live deep in these caves makes them very hard to hunt. For example, this is Jack yesterday. On his way down to the seafloor, he sees a bunch of black grouper, lines up on the biggest one, and pulls the trigger. It's a good shot, but not good enough to keep it out of one of those underwater caves. There's like... There's like six blacks looking. And so we spend the next 20 minutes diving up and down to try and shimmy the injured fish out of a tiny hole 80 feet underwater. Although it is a pain in the ass, if they were easy to catch, it wouldn't be nearly as satisfying to spear them. This is my buddy Justin, and on his way down to the seafloor, he sees another black grouper. Him and his brother own the boat we're out on today, and they have a YouTube channel as well. Anyways, this is an example of spearfishing grouper done perfectly. After placing a solid shot into the fish, although it does try to squirm back into one of those caves, Justin yanks it away while he's still down there, and the fish is secured in just one dive. The next one we spear, however, won't be quite so easy. In the 1930s, Ernest Hemingway lived here in Key West, Florida. And when he went out on his fishing boat, he reportedly averaged one catch every three minutes. Including fish such as marlin, wahoo, albacore, amberjack, and three kinds of grouper. And considering Hemingway's notorious fascination with catching big game, it's safe to assume that goliaths were among the three different kinds of grouper he liked to catch. Maybe because his epic fishing stories inspired the next generation, or maybe just because catching grouper is awesome. Over the next few decades, Goliath groupers were hunted a lot. Sort of like the sharks in Indonesia today. Back in the 1970s and 80s in Florida, the locals had neither the knowledge nor resources to understand the damage they were doing to the population. According to an article on saltstrong.com, because they don't fear many things in the ocean due to their size, they don't fear divers and spear fishermen like other saltwater game fish do. They went on to say that Goliath grouper aren't afraid of men in speedos either, which proves they aren't very smart. Anyways, because of this, it was incredibly easy for good spear fishermen to have a field day spearing goliaths prior to 1990. And for normal line fishermen, it was similarly easy to load up once they found a goliath honey hole. Goliath groupers can live to be up to 37 years old. And similar to the Napoleon wrasses in Indonesia, they need more time to reproduce than many other fish species. Luckily, in the early 90s, goliath groupers were given that time. After being determined critically endangered worldwide, the state of Florida made it illegal to catch them. Fast forward to today, however, the population has bounced back spectacularly. So much so that not only are they not afraid of people, they're actually attracted to them because they've learned to associate humans with a free meal. 
This YouTube video from Diver Sherwood is a perfect example. These guys are spearing invasive lionfish, and that Goliath knows exactly what's going on. And time and time again throughout our trip, we're sort of followed around by Goliaths, hoping to steal our catch. At this point in time, everyone speared a grouper other than Jack and me. And so, immediately after my buddy Just surfaces with his grouper, I dive down and almost land on top of one. But I don't see it. But despite Jack grunting as hard as he can to try and point it out to me during the dive. And by the time I do see it, it's too late. The fish got spooked. The cloud of dust you see here is all that's left of it as it bolts away lightning fast. This Goliath, on the other hand, wasn't spooked at all. In fact, it seemed equally disappointed that it didn't get the free meal it was expecting. There's a nice black right behind you. Was there? There's a big one too. He was like, <laughs> Was it still there? No, he. he, he I he, thought I saw a puff of dust. It, that's where he was. Fuck. Yeah, he was just chill. He was coming in. He kept coming in more and more. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what I was like, hollering at you. Now it's Jack's turn. He's diving on what we are about to realize is an extremely intricate underwater cave system. You can see on the right is a Goliath, and on the left is a black. And it's big. But the line gets tangled and the fish tears free. And both groupers take refuge in the exact same hole. I hit him, but I got muscle wrapped. But I hit him like right in the gill plate. He, he just shot under the slide. Jack's confident that we can still find that grouper. And so we spend the next 30 minutes crawling as deep into that cave as possible, looking for him. On one of the dives, though, I get distracted by a school of yellow jacks who seem to be attracted to all the commotion. At which point, Justin hears my shot and can't resist either. Meanwhile, Jack sees the grouper, but still can't get a good shot on it. Did you, see, did you see where he went? Until finally, deep, deep inside the cave, so much so that Jack's body is almost completely out of view, he sees that Goliath again. And behind the Goliath is the black. After trying to yank it out while he's down there, he runs out of air and backs out of the hole. At which point my other buddy, Derek, takes over. Hey, look. He is way back there. Oh, I know he's back there. Um, I was just going to say, pulled, just start ripping and It felt like he was moving. Yeah, that's what I felt too. I made a good shot on him. I, 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 I felt him and I was like getting headway on him. 
And so basically now everyone takes turns diving, trying to yank that fish out a little bit more each time before the Goliath swallows it whole. Finally, 20 minutes later, Jack's able to grab it. smaller than I thought he was. It's a different one. Different fish, yeah. Turns out that grouper isn't the same as the original one he shot because that initial spear wound isn't there. It's impossible to know for sure, but I'd be willing to bet that the first one he speared is already deep inside that Goliath's belly. At this point, I'm the only one who hasn't speared a grouper. And so I head back down at a different spot. I'm not sure how deep this is, but probably around 75 feet. I see one, finally, but I'm not sure if it's a legal size. So I quickly double check with Jack, who confirms, and then proceed to wait for the right angle to place a good shot. Nice, dude. Oh, I thought I was gonna stone it. It was a good shot, though. Time to untangle another fish. Justin dives down while I catch my breath, and luckily it wasn't able to swim that deep inside the hole. Thanks, man. Ooh, all right. I don't know why, but the fact that spearing fish can be so difficult makes eating them way more delicious. Speaking of which, this is the part of the video where we cook the fish on the boat, show an idyllic sunset, and I talk about the lessons I learned from the adventure. But I'm not really sure what the lesson is. What I do know is that Goliath groupers are pretty fucking cool. What do you think of Florida, dude? Uh, it's horrible. Never coming back. 